Well, glory. Welcome to Healing Health. I'm Pastor Virgil, and we're talking about things that hinder people in receiving the healing that God has for them. God spoke to me some time ago and said we had uh, holes in our doctrine of healing. And uh, in asking him about what those holes might be, uh, he showed me some things in three different areas. Number one, the area of identity, knowing who we are in Christ. Number two, in the area of understanding faith, that we have a sometimes a, a religious works understanding of faith. And then thirdly, in the area of community, uh, that uh, Christianity, and specifically faith for healing, uh, was never supposed to be an individual endeavor, that we're in this together. And uh, we've been, we started talking in the last two or three uh, sessions about the subject of faith. And we're word of faith people where I come from at our churches. And, and so we've been taught a lot about faith. But sometimes we, we get some interesting ideas that, that maybe hinder us because we don't take a good look at them and see what we're actually believing. We believe that God wants each and every one of us to be healed and that uh, receiving healing as Christians is supposed to be done uh, by faith. We're supposed to believe we receive when we pray, the Bible says. As a matter of fact, Mark eleven twenty four is our very famous text on the subject of the prayer of faith where Jesus said, uh, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Our uh, a great leader in this movement, Kenneth E. Hagin, said, Hope says, I'll have it sometime. Faith says, I have it now. You know, over the last 40 years, I've prayed for a lot of sick people. And uh, we've seen a whole bunch of them get healed. And I believe, as we saw, I believe in our last lesson about the will of God to heal, that God wants to heal every single one. Uh, many don't get healed, uh, but many do. And thank God for the ones that do. But there are a lot of folks that haven't overcome their sense of failure, sense of condemnation. Uh, maybe they're not convinced that it's the will of God to heal them. Uh, they struggle in all kinds of things. But in 40 years of uh, ministry and uh, pastor in four different churches, I've uh, seen many, many, many precious Christian people who struggle with the simple idea that uh, faith is now, that we believe we receive when we pray. Uh, they can't get past what they see and feel over into the faith realm. And we're going to try to help that understanding a little bit in this session. The, the, the most counterintuitive part of faith and believing we receive when we pray is that idea that we receive it when we pray even though we can't see it or feel it yet. I know that can be difficult. I've asked people for years. I, I'll... Uh, I look at a congregation that I've been teaching myself for years. I know they've heard it over and over again. And yet I'll say, what is it that Jesus said that you would have? And they look at you, you know, like that the proverbial cow at a new gate. And, and uh, you know they've heard it. They might look just a little confused. Um, but then the, uh, maybe the most bold of them might say, I have what I asked for. No, I want you to go back and read that again. That, that's not exactly what he said. Uh, often they'll read it over and over again, still can't see it. They've been sitting there listening to it for years and still can't see it. The promise is that you'll have what you believe you receive when you pray. Whatever it is you think you got the moment that you said amen, that is what you're going to eventually have. That's the problem. Many judge whether they received by how they feel when they say amen. And if you do that, you're trapped in the realm of the five physical senses, and you're going to have a hard time receiving by faith. I prayed, but my symptoms are unchanged. Therefore, either God didn't hear me, I didn't pray correctly, or maybe it's not the will of God to heal me. Now, in faith churches, uh, because we've taught so many uh, times about this subject, people won't admit that that's what they're thinking. Uh, because they don't want to appear unspiritual, so they don't say it. But you get exactly what you believe you receive when you pray. And they got exactly what they believe they receive when they pray, which was nothing. They didn't believe a single thing. The key to believing you receive when you pray is understanding that there is another realm outside the physical senses and becoming familiar with that realm, and that is the realm of the Spirit, the realm of eternity, uh, the realm that we can't touch with our feelings. Most of us live in the land of seeing is believing. 
We don't like to admit that once again because we've made so much fun of uh, good old doubting Thomas over the years uh, for having to, to touch the, the hole in Jesus' hand. But all the other disciples did the same thing. Uh, they just didn't get set apart as uh, making doubt part of their name. But uh, uh, our, in, in our case, seeing is believing means that we're, our well-being is determined by our bank balance. If somebody asks us if we're blessed, we have to go look at our checkbook, if you still have a checkbook, and uh, look at the numbers to see if we're blessed or not. Our love for other people is conditioned on the way they treat us. And uh, boy, if that's, if that's your love walk, that only the people that treat you well uh, you're going to love, then, then you're going to have a hard time dealing with human beings. And then uh, our physical health and what we believe about it is contingent on how we feel. And as long as we're in that realm, we're going to have a difficult time. Faith requires that we look outside of these five physical senses. Uh, there's a wonderful verse in, in Hebrews chapter 11 uh, where he talks about faith being the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But in the, in the Amplified Bible, it says it this way. Let me read it to you. Now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. The physical senses are touch, taste, smell, sight, and hearing. Uh, they're God-given, all right. And they're the means by which we get information from the physical, natural realm. Faith is our ability to perceive and, and uh, be convicted or assured of the reality of a realm that's outside the five physical senses. It's sort of a sixth sense, if you will. The spirit realm is perceived by faith. And until we grasp the reality of that spirit realm and understand that faith operates in the spirit realm as well as in the natural realm, we're going to be tied to whatever's going on in the physical world. The physical world is oftentimes very bright, very loud, and in the subject of healing, sometimes it's painful and uncomfortable. And so when we're tied into those senses, we're uh, distracted by all those things that are going on around us or in us. Faith for healing has to look past that noise and touch the quiet assurance of the Spirit if we're going to believe we receive when we pray. There is a spirit world around us at all times. In the uh, first Kings, pardon me, second Kings, you remember, Elisha told his servant to go out and look uh, because there's more of us than there are of them. The city was surrounded by the Assyrian army and the servant was looking at the army thinking, man, we're in trouble. And Elisha said, don't worry, there's more of us than there are of them. And uh, the, the servant uh, certainly probably thought the old man had lost his mind. But, but uh, when he opened the eyes of his understanding... He could see the angels that far outnumbered the Assyrian soldiers. That reality was there all the time. And Elisha was aware of that spiritual reality. Our goal is to become consciously aware of the spirit realm. Because faith is based in the spirit realm. God is the great I am. He's already in tomorrow and can answer your prayer tomorrow if you receive it today. You can know things in the spirit realm. Now, in preparing uh, to go forward in faith uh, this week, I want you to read your Bible. Look for verses that are in the present tense or the past tense. They're telling you that something's already done or something uh, was done uh, in the past. If you believe those things to be true, how would it change your life if you believe you were healed? How would it change your life if you believe that you were made the righteousness of God in Christ? Try to picture what's going on in the spirit realm when you're reading the scriptures. Different times during the day, just stop, get quiet for a moment, and think, what's going on around me in the spirit? Pray that God would open the eyes of your understanding, that you could see that there really are more of us than there are of them. I want to encourage you to visit our uh, website at pastorvirgil.com and uh, just uh, search on there for hashtag healing help and you'll find uh, some of the written lessons on this very subject. God wants you to be healed. So do we. This one is healing help number 15. If you go to look for it, it'll bless you. God bless you and we'll see you next time.